Good afternoon Reds all around the world. My name is Mark Dutton and this is Cop For That. So let's get straight to the team news from today. It is Wednesday, we are playing West Bromwich Albion at Anfield and he has brought in the Fab Four. The Fab Four are back from the 7-0 demolition of Spartak Moscow. He's brought them all back. Was this his plan all along? Did he think that the West Bromwich Albion game was a bigger game than the Everton derby? a few days ago and for all you Evertonians out there I'm sorry all the shiny things behind me they're trophies just so you know the cups are when you win tournaments and championships that's what that is so trophies behind me for all you blues um, so anyway back to the team news he's brought Robinson I thought had an outstanding game against Everton Robbo's gone back in at left back right back he brings in Trent Alexander-Arnold his central defender partnership continue with Clavin and Lovren. And you can say what you want about Lovren in relation to the derby. I thought Lovren had a great game, so did Clavin. I don't think Clavin's ever let us down. Mignolet starts in goal. Then I'm going to say he's going for a 4-4-2. Um, it'll never be written down like that on paper. Um, all the television crews and television companies won't put it down as a 4-4-2, but I believe it is more of a 4-4-2. Um, again, the captain's out. Henderson's been dropped. He brings in Emre Chan and Georgie Wijnaldum as a two, in my opinion. Again, they'll have it as a three with Coutinho on the left, with Chan in the centre and Georgie in the right. But I believe that it is actually a two of Emre Chan and Georgie Wijnaldum. That, for me, is our strongest central midfield. Um, I believe that Salah will play as a second centre forward with Firmino, allowing Coutinho to play on the left and Sane to play on the right. So that is the team news from today. It's a very strong Liverpool team. Um, I basically believe that this is the best Liverpool squad we've had in a long, long time. Um, going back, you know, over the 20 year span. Uh, it's a phenomenal squad. And I think that allows Klopp to rotate. I think that when he puts the team out against Everton, and you see the team news, you know, Dominic Solanke's playing, Oxlade-Chamberlain is, is playing also, uh, Gomez, in it, in it right back and Robinson in it left back um, th there was questions asked why Why isn't the Fab Four playing what's he doing how can he drop Chan and Wijnaldum but I think you know he's planned this he's got a plan I have total faith in the manager um, and again if we get the result tonight and we get the result against Bournemouth for the weekend then are we that, are we that asked about you know having a draw at Anfield against Everton I mean, you think about the Blues, they've disappeared off the face of the earth in the last six weeks. You know, social media, they've disappeared. You don't see anybody, any Blue on social media. They're basically, they're basically hiding at the bottom of the Mersey. Then all of a sudden, like the big swamp monsters that they are, the team news comes out from Jurgen Klopp that he's made these changes and the swamp monster appears. And just, just a couple, only a couple, a couple of Blues start trudging along to Anfield with a little bit of confidence and you know Sam Aldice came out midweek and just said um, definitely the team news that Liverpool have put out gave you know Everton a lift and you know spared them on now my only concern going into the game was I thought Oxlade-Chamberlain Gomez and Salah were our best three players tended to play down the right side so I think everything we did good in the, in the first half of the derby was, was down the right side beautiful ball played out to Salah Salah uses his strength out muscles the defender cuts inside goes into the 18 one on one with a second defender beats a second defender and cuts past the third defender left foot opens up his body and puts the ball in the upper 90 a awesome goal probably one of the best goals I've seen in a Merseyside derby and I've been a Liverpool fan for I would say 30 I want to say 36 years so I'm 39 just 39 recently so unbelievable goal I would say two, three minutes later, we get a throw in on the left side, ball's thrown in. Mane receives the ball, he skips past the defender. There's one defender to beat, three Liverpool players to the right. The defender checks to the left. Mane, I think with the cops singing the song, Mane scoring all around us, children playing, having fun. It's a season, love and understanding. Merry Christmas, Everton. So with the song being sung, I feel like Mane's gone, you know what, I'm going to be the star of the derby again. I'm going to score for the second derby in a row. 
make all the Liverpool fans Christmas the greatest Christmas ever. Make all those bitter blues cry into their ready break. And all he's got to do is just slot it in the corner or pass it and square the ball. He goes for the shot, he misses it, and every single Liverpool fan, whether it's in the ground, around the world, on their TV, has just gone, No! Why didn't you square it, you absolute knobhead? Greedy, greedy, bastard! Pass the ball! That was it. Pass the ball, Oxlade-Chamberlain walks it in, Coutinho walks it in. Jordan Henderson walks it in. Any one of the three players to your right walks the ball into the goal, the derby's over. You know, so half time comes in. You're winning 1 0, you're bossing the game. First 20 minutes of the second half, we come out, play exactly the same way. Everton make two changes, bring on two central midfielders, move Rooney into a, an attacking central midfielder, number 10 role, playing behind the striker. And we boss the game for another 25 minutes. And then you're not worried. And then take Salah off. Now, my, my immediate concern there was, he's injured. There's no way you're taking Salah off. He's your best player. Messi would not come off for Barcelona in a game where they're playing Real Madrid and it's 1-0. Wouldn't happen. There's no way. And basically, he's our Messi, right? Mo Salah, congratulations, by the way. African footballer of the year and well-deserved. You are an awesome footballer. And you've been our star man this season. You know, you can talk about the Fab Four, but let's just talk about Salah. Salah has been breathtaking his first touch his ball control his movement with the ball his ability to dribble the ball and guide and glide past players it's second to none and then again you question his finishing maybe at the start of the season first couple of games he had a lot of chances and he and he missed he missed i would say five but then he scores the sixth his finishing over the last i would say six seven weeks has been unbelievable and it has spurred Liverpool on to be the top goal scorers in Europe over the last six games. I mean, we were outscoring everybody. Um, and that, for me, comes from him and his ability with the ball. You know, we've had some phenomenal players over the last few years. And you go with Steven Gerrard, Captain Fantastic. You, you then turn to Luis Suarez, just a player that can change a game, that can win a game out of absolutely nothing. Even though when you're playing poorly, he can win a game. And then you, you get Mo Salah. And what a breath of fresh air. You know, the 30 plus million that we paid for him, what's he worth now? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell him tomorrow for 150 million. You know, Coutinho, Coutinho. If you want to go in January, you you definitely have my blessing. Emre, Emre Chan will be a devastating loss, and I can't stand Emre Chan. But all of a sudden, I think Emre Chan and Georgie Wijnaldum look phenomenal in the centre of the park for Liverpool. Um, Jordan Henderson. I don't think we need his position. Jordan Henderson's playing as a defensive centre midfielder when we play as a three. And his job is basically to quarterback the team. He receives the ball from a central defender, passes the ball sideways, passes the ball diagonally. That's basically Jordan Henderson's role. Um, I think, like we did against Spartak Moscow, we didn't, for me, didn't play with a defensive centre mid. We played with Ronaldo and Chan as a two, like I said, with Salah and Firmino as a two as well. So it looked more four four two, and I think we can. I think we can play four four two and boss games. I don't think we'll get overrun in midfield. And I think the quality that we have wide, the quality we have in central locations, um, our, our fullbacks are outstanding. We've been blessed with you know four or five outstanding fullbacks. And again, you've got James Milner there, um, who I'm a big fan of, who can also play fullback. I would play Milner wide. I thought Oxley Chamberlain had an outstanding derby game, and again, his work was wide. Milner put a phenomenal ball in in the second half, as did Oxley Chamberlain. But they both did their both their work from central midfield moving into wide positions and putting balls into the box so like I said Milner played for Man City in a wide area very rarely used in the middle of the field and I think we've used him wide as a fullback for the last 18 months and I think him moving into a wide area maybe to give maybe to give legs to Coutinho on the left or give legs to Mane on the right might be more of an option in that formation especially if we're going to play 4-4-2 and eliminate what I would call the Jordan Henderson position, which, again, I don't believe we need in any type of game, especially teams that come and park the bus. You know, you think of the Manchester United game, we probably didn't need him in that role. Um, we definitely didn't need him against Moscow, that's why he didn't play, and then we didn't need him in the Merseyside derby. And then Klopp has gone back to that tonight. So I think he's planned out his substitution. So like I said, Salah going off, my biggest concern was he's not injured. He's he's definitely, definitely hurt. But then he took off like Oxley Chamberlain. So for me, two of our three best players have just left the field. You know, with with Gomez Gomez staying on a, at right back. Um, he takes off the Ox and he takes off Salah. For me, our most dangerous players. That was a head scratcher. So 
where I think he's got it right in relation to his squad, and I go back to him and tell you that his squad right now is fantastic, and I'm, I'm backing his squad 100%. I think it's brilliant. It's the best squad we've had in a long time. He has the ability to rotate these players. Um, I don't think his substitutions and his in-game management are the best, and I felt like he should never have took Salah off, unless Salah's turned around and said, I've got an injury, but he's playing tonight, so I don't know how much of an injury that is. I don't know if that's just a rumour that's just been put out there to basically take some of the heat off Jurgen Klopp. Um, I want to talk briefly about his actions at the end of the game. Um, it's, it's obviously not a penalty. You know, Rooney gets the ball, he plays a, a diagonal ball over the top, Lovren has got to win that ball in the air. Number one, hasn't really been talked about too much. He doesn't win the first ball. So the ball falls behind Lovren to the striker, Calvin Lewis. He gets the ball and he's clever because as the ball bounces and he controls it, it's a good first touch. He steps into Lovren. He takes a step backwards in, basically inviting the pressure of the defender. And as he steps into Lovren, Lovren's hands are kind of come up. Again, that's the contact. That didn't knock me over. That was the contact on the attacker. I didn't fall off the chair. Um, so... It was a tough call to be made by the referee. I felt he got it wrong. I would have booked Calvin Lewis for diving. I felt he did dive. I felt very poorly for Lovren because I thought Lovren had an outstanding game um, other than that one decision. And it just it's just kind of like, it's him again. You know what I mean? I think Sam Allardyce probably would have went in and said, listen, let's just ping the ball out of play because they looked like they were just kicking the ball out of play for the first 35, 40 minutes. That's all they did. That was Everton's one tactic. But I felt like it was there to say, let's see if Liverpool can make a mistake. And the one mistake that we made in the second half was that play. And that cost us a penalty. And Rooney steps up, smashes it down the middle like he did previously in, in, a, in a Manchester derby. The funny thing was, in my head, I'm thinking, he's going to smash this down the middle. His last, his last three penalties, it was two to the bottom left, one to the bottom right. But like I said, I had a flashback to a, uh, a derby between Manchester United and Man City, and he smashed the ball down the middle. I'm thinking, man, you like, just stand up here and you'll save this. But obviously he didn't hear my message that I was sending all the way from New Jersey, USA, into his head. So he doesn't save the penalty. And then Klopp starts making this, you know, the substitutions that you, that you would have said, you could have made it off time, possibly. Um, you know, Coutinho and Firmino, he, bring, he brings both of them. And then the head scratcher, I, I'm a fan of Danny Ings. To come back from two ACL injuries is, is humongous. But coming on in a, a Merseyside derby, I didn't think we needed to change. I didn't think I think he could have backed the players that were on the field. Um, I could have left the ox on 100%. Again, most definitely, you don't take Messi off when you're playing for Barcelona and it's 1-0. He does that. Um, it gave Everton a second boost, so they get the first boost with the with the initial team news. Again, I'm, I'm I'm fine with the squad rotation. I think our squad is good enough for us to do that, and I think we have players that aren't even on the bench that are good enough to play in this team and and help us and push us on. Um, it just spared Everton. On they would have looked at their team news. They would have been planning for Mane, Salah, Coutinho, and Firmino, and then when they see Solanke playing and Oxley Chamberlain, they're probably and Milner, and Henderson, they're probably going, well, what's going on there? So it gave them a lift. It gave them another lift. Salah going off. It must, I, if I'm an Everton fan, sitting in the Annie Road, I've just gone, oh, look at that. He's just took off Salah. What? Come on, Everton. We've got a chance here. And it spared them on, and they got the goal. So that's that. So I don't think anybody's going to be bothered, if, if you're a Red. We're playing some fantastic football. We're dominating possession. We look better at the back. We look better than we did six weeks ago. There looks like an air of confidence going through the team. Um, yes, Klopp lost his head at the end of the game, but, you know, He's very angry with the referees for giving the penalty. I understand that, but then he's got to try and channel his inner, his, his inner zen. He's got to relax. He's got to calm down because he goes into a Sky Sports interview and basically wants to fight the uh, the interviewer, which is wrong. And you can, you know, represent Liverpool Football Club. You've got to do a better job in relation to handling the media. And I think he he'll get there. It was a very for me. It was a very Kenny Dalglish moment playing Manchester United. But I think Klopp will get there. Uh, I've got total faith in him as a manager, and I, and I think Liverpool are going to have a have an excellent second half to the season. I just think Klopp's gone back to last season where we look knackered. We basically lost the championship in this period. We went out of two cups in this period. So he's really trying to, number one, bring in a team that is good enough to compete throughout the entire season. I feel like he's done that. Number two, um, basically get us through this winter period where we're playing game after game after game after game after game. And I feel like we can do it. So like I said, if we win tonight, which I, I think we will, West Brom are... A horrific team right now. It's not the it's not the team that that West Brom had three years ago when we're going down there and we're losing or four or five years ago. Um, 
it's a very different team. They look short on confidence, and hopefully Liverpool can absolutely obliterate them tonight. So I'm happy with the team he's put out tonight. Um, obviously, he's going to make changes going into the weekend again. And again, I would back Liverpool down in Bournemouth to get three points there. So if we take if we take six points out of the next two games, as a Liverpool fan, I will be over the moon. So enjoy the game tonight, Reds. Like I said, Fab Four is back. Two central midfielders of Emre Chan and Georgie Wijnaldum. Fullbacks are Robbo and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Your centre halves are Clavin and Lovren. Get behind, get behind Lovren. Hopefully, he has a great game tonight, and then Mignolet is in goal. This has been Cough for That. My name again is Mark Dutton. Subscribe below, comment, and like this video, and you will never walk alone. Let's get him tonight, Reds. Let's have it.